This room is dedicated to the work of one artist, Lauren Harris, by many considered the greatest of the group of seven. Lauren Harris was different, however. He had a different background. The other members of the group very often struggled to earn a living. They either had to keep up a, a job as a commercial artist or teach at a, an art school. Lauren Harris didn't need to do that. He was rich. He was the heir to the Massey Harris farm machinery manufacturing firm, at that time producing the largest number of uh, farm machinery in the, in the world, in fact. A very rich man indeed. This meant he could concentrate on his art and actually he was really the leader, if there was one, of the Group of Seven. Right in the early days, in 1911, it was Lauren Harris who was urging the formation of a group of painters dedicated to painting Canada. It was he who brought A.Y. Jackson to Toronto. It was he who encouraged Tom Thompson. He was behind it all. And in 1920, the Group of Seven was formed in his mansion in Toronto. He provided an awful lot of support and help, but he was a great artist in his own right. He was interesting because unlike Thompson, who focused on what he saw, a simple bank with snow and trees and leaves, gradually, Lauren Harris turned his back on detail. What he wanted was a stark landscape. Why was that? He was a theosophist. In the 1920s, the Theosophical Society was incredibly popular amongst the uh, community of musicians and artists in the North Americas. It's a difficult uh, philosophy. It basically sees the divine in nature. It pulls together all religions under one idea. Um, it's a complicated business, but the divine in nature was what Lauren Harris was searching for. And gradually, he started discovering it. On the north shore of Lake Superior, where he went one summer, he found a landscape that had recently been burned over in a fire, and that was what he wanted. Vast expanses of water, huge skies, bare landscape. Funnily enough, he then had to travel even further to find that kind of landscape in which he could explore these ideas of the divine. He spent a lot of time on Lake Superior, but he went west to the Rockies and painted great mountains pointing upwards like praying hands. And finally, in 1930, he was invited by the government to accompany Alec Jackson to the Arctic. It's as if he was going to end up at the North Pole, searching for God in the landscape. What he found was icebergs. And if an artist was ever born to paint icebergs, it was Lauren Harris. Here you have water, ice, sky, cold, everything sculpted by the wind into remarkable shapes. This uh, view was painted in the, the wonderfully named Disco Bay. But when you look at an, a painting like this, done earlier at Lake Superior, you'll notice that he's painted the clouds in a very similar way. These are decorative and powerful paintings. He's loved the effects of the sky. This is what a friend of mine used to refer to as the Old Testament effect. Beams of sun hitting white water. A necklace of clouds draped across. Hugely decorative, very profound. We've lit the room as if it were almost a chapel each individual painting spotlit. You are meant to contemplate and meditate in front of these paintings. And there's a story here. Lauren Harris in his search for the bleak, the stark, the sublime, the divine, becomes simpler and simpler. His mountains become almost like models of mountains made in tin. He's becoming more and more abstract. In 1934, after the Group of Seven had been disbanded, Lauren Harris was involved in a scandal. He ran off with another man's wife. The scandal was such that he left for America. 
and stayed in Arizona for a while in the vicinity of Georgia O'Keeffe, which rings a bell here. When he came back in 1940 to Vancouver, Lauren Harris was an abstract artist. 